Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, In the Metal Introduces. Uh, In the Metal Introduces is a, an abbreviated version of our uh, conversation with the uh, watchmakers uh, that we've been having over the last year, year and a half. And what we're doing with uh, In the Metal Introduces is to look at a new watch on launch day. And today we are looking at a piece which has been uh, just launched this morning, hot off the press. Uh, it is a fabulous piece by uh, two young English watch companies. Well, one is young in that the watch, the man behind it is a, a young man. And the other is a, another guy who is, he needed to get his act together soon. And uh, he is <laughs> uh, David Brailsford from Garrick. So uh, uh, without any further ado, because we've had a little bit of a technical issue uh, to kick off with, uh, we're just going to go straight and uh, welcome back uh, David Brailsford from Garrick and uh, Nicholas <laughs> Fears. Uh, two young watch brands, two watch brands that have really over the last decade absolutely made their uh, presence felt on the independent uh, uh, sector and the independent sphere. So guys, welcome back again. Uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us today uh, to have a look at the watch which you have uh, debuted this morning and which I believe has been met with a phenomenal response. Incredible. Absolutely. We're both extremely pleased. We knew it'd be a hit, but we're overwhelmed really by the response. It's been it's been so positive. Um, honestly, amazing. It really has best. You know, we couldn't have imagined it'd be so good, to be honest. Dave, Dave obviously has much more confidence in ourselves than I do. I, I always get up to the night before launch of any watch and suddenly just have this huge sense of it's going to be a disaster and so of course, of course can't sleep and it results in me doing a very weird thing that anyone who follows my personal instagram will see i have certain traditions that i do on launch day on the, first day the first one is i always wear the first fears watch that yeah, number one i recreated when i brought the company back to life so watch number one it's my go lucky charm and the second thing is, once the newsletter goes out, the watch is in the world, I treat myself to breakfast at McDonald's. And I've been doing that for the last six years. And so far, it hasn't yet failed. So sadly, it's now become a superstitious tradition that I must keep up. But it obviously worked because, as Dave said, it's, uh, it's been incredible to see the results the, this morning. I mean, it's this is a long to do with the project. Watch. It's purely the fact that you went to McDonald's for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah to our people who are uh, following us there for the comments thank you so much Dave, for that and so on for also telling us that it wasn't working the first time round. so yeah well, okay. glad to hear that yeah, we're thank you. all just for those who don't know we fixed it we pulled the string tight over the over the, over the water didn't we johnny uh, you yeah, over yeah, in ireland yeah, yeah. Yeah. And tin cans <laughs> irish technology it's brilliant <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm telling you, you know, so uh, that, that's why we got the, you know, Facebook, Intel, Microsoft, eBay, PayPal, Apple, Absolutely. you know, this day. I mean, yeah. We had it over here, Johnny, 10 years ago. It's literally just come to you, I think, in the last, what, 20 minutes by the looks it of is. it. We don't, we don't charge them any tax here, so you know, it's <laughs> That's it, that gives them an unfair yeah. advantage. Yeah. Like, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, so... Uh, yeah, so you introduced your uh, new watch today. Tell us a little bit about how the new watch came, uh, came to be. And while we're doing it there, I will get uh, an image of it up here and we can take a little look. You can explain how the new Fears Garrick collaboration came into being and how it ha you, you really nailed it with this because there's so many absolutely beautiful Details. Yeah, so, so me and Nick have been friends for many, many years. We, we've got deep admiration for everything that we do, the brands that, you know, it's we're always discussing things privately, helping each other out, offering advice, um, talking about the watch industry. So it was kind of a no-brainer for us. We suggested it over, I think we'd been out for the evening. We met at Costa Coffee um, in the morning probably with hangovers, no doubt. And then we, we just, the, the idea came up and we kind of mulled over it. 
and then it was a three year well over three years um process so when we say that we mean it really um there was so many um um changes to the design over time and you know including the hands the dial everything else the, the case again it's a brand new case so um it, it's been a it's been a long long project um as nick will tell you but it's all about friendship more than anything it's we we thought it was a good collaboration we thought it was good for both brands we were both quite iconic brands um but it was more about the fact you know we're, we're friends and we knew it had worked and people have commented and even said to nick about you know did you argue well the fact is johnny you and you'll find it unbelievable we didn't at all we both agreed with everything um and we, we, there was no problems at all throughout the entire project it was a match made in heaven really and I, I i'll second that exactly i mean the the cost of coffee came because so dave and his partner came down to uh, canterbury where i was uh, at the time living with my husband and we'd had basically you know they'd come down for the weekend we had a fun weekend Oh, yeah. And yeah, we're in Costa and, and and Dave basically, I kind of on reflection wasn't sure whether he was half joking when he said, look, we've been friends a few years now, why don't we make a watch? And, you know, that was November 2018. And last night, sort of in preparation for, for, for today, I was going back through our company's digital archive and I found all the original sketches and drawings for the very first version of the design. And that was beginning of 2019. I mean, we literally had, the idea of let's do something together was in November and within a couple of months, we already are bringing, you know, the ideas together. And Dave makes a good point about the, you know, we didn't fall out. Now, the thing is, both of us are, well, anyone who knows us will both know in our own way, we're very opinionated. We're very strong willed. We have strong yeah. ideas of, you know, the identity we want for our brands. So, of course, that would normally mean putting two together you, you'd expect us to be fighting but i think this is where the friendship helped if we'd signed a contract and said oh this company is working with this company then there would have been a lot of falling out i think because yeah, right. of our mutual yeah. respect yeah. you know and there were certain points where i would have to try and convince dave to come around to my thinking and vice versa and i think that's why i keep seeing the, the phrase today true collaboration and i think that's it this is not a, this hasn't been dreamt up by some marketing department. I mean, back back when we first shook hands in Costa Coffee, I was the only person in the company. So, you know, there was, there was no clever Absolutely. marketing strategy. This was yeah. the idea of saying, what if we bring our two strong opinions on how to make a watch together? And over the years, it has, you know, it, the design changed. I mean, Dave mentioned, I think it was the start of this year, A little bit of a technical issue there with uh, Nicholas. Um, he's another one who's not paid. He's broadband. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, if you can hear me, uh, if you want to remove yourself and come back in again, we've just lost your your picture has frozen, and uh, so if you want to uh, wish, are you oh, back? back? Yeah, yeah. So uh, right, Nick, you've got you've got a dodgy internet connection. So we just uh, <laughs> a few technical issues with this uh, uh, episode. Uh, if Nicholas, if you can hear me, if you want to uh, cook, uh, log out and come back in again, we, we will continue here and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to rejoin us. And um, But obviously what uh, Nicholas was saying, David, is that um, uh, that you were, uh, where I would have imagined, how do two companies bring their two very distinctive uh, aesthetic Back, we've got you back there, I think, Nicholas. Um, yes, and um, yeah, so um, well, it had to be it had to the, the watch obviously had to have both brands' DNA, but we didn't want to reuse everything that we'd done before, that just wouldn't have worked. And and you know, it's been done a million times with collabs. Um, they 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 use an existing watch, they change it. We didn't want to do that at all, so we we did everything from scratch, really. And and it was important to do that. We you know, we had to make a big splash. And so the dial design from the ground up, it was a brand new case. We didn't use an existing case. And I'm, strangely enough, I've been asked by quite a few clients if we'll 
it, you know, what case is that? And will we include it on the S4 or the S5? And I said, no, it's exclusive to this watch. And that's the point. Everything on this watch, it's exclusive. Um, and we did it from the ground up. I mean, the case is beautiful, really. It's um, the finishing. It wears more like a 40 mil than a 42 mil. Um, you know, we did we did different interpretations of the dial, as Nick said, and um, and it was forty seven different versions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Forty seven uh, yeah, little all, adjustments, all, but crazy. Yeah, honestly. Um, so it's and actually it, the, it, the point you made, Dave, about the case, I think, is very important because you know I I, I own a, a Garrick piece unique in my personal watch collection, yeah, which I absolutely adore. But when I wear it, I'm wearing a Garrick not a fears and it's very definitely feels like a garrick and when i go to watch meetups people spot it from the other side of the room because of the case the proportions the finishing and that was the big thing we i think that was one of the first decisions we made in costa coffee was no this was not going to be just a redialed garrick this had to be yeah, from really the ground cool. up and think yeah. of all the engineering we had to do for the the power reserve to make that fit oh, yeah, with yeah, i mean Johnny, the only thing we did argue on, and I'm still not happy now, is the fact that it's got fears in massive letters. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a joke. You know, <laughs> but, you know, I, I would counter that by saying, like, you know, the, 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 the Garrick uh, free sprung balance and balance bridge is so so much a part of yeah. your design language that it, it kind of says Garrick. Uh, no, exactly. Listen, I'm joking. Nick Nick knows it's a fierce watch, and that's what it is. It's the fierce Garrick. Garrick is the range, and and uh, Garrick Garrick is the collaboration. So genuinely, there's no arguing of any kind um, on this project. It was honestly, when I say a match made in heaven, I, I genuinely mean it. But um, you know, it's we're both good at certain things. We're and and Nick's got an, a, an eye for detail, and that's kind of where. Why like we went back and forth for literally 40 some attempts on the dial before we got it right because as, as stupid as it sounds getting those two sub dials to balance um was a nightmare was it not nick we couldn't get the power reserve right we went through various um indications before we settled on just keeping it in the background that's it exactly and i think that was I think, you know, we, we just to, to sort of confirm, when we talk about 47 different, uh, you know, dial variations and versions of the design, yeah. if you look at, say, version 12 and version 13, you, you almost won't see a difference because the difference will be a small adjustment in the weight of a line or, or, the, or, or the placement of yeah. a part. But if you look at 1 to 47, so last night, I, I think I WhatsApp Dave at about midnight, showing him the very first version we came up with at the beginning of 2019. And yes, it sort of looks like the end watch, but it looks completely different. And I, the biggest thing also for me was, you know, Dave kept saying this, we, we, we launch it when it's ready and we have, when we're designing, it has to be right. This has to be, you know, we, we, we have to explore every avenue with the design and even when it came to the making you know it's one thing machining a case but then it's going well does the case work all polished or do we need to do some brushing here or brushing there and you know there were all these small little details that as we went along we kept refining and perfecting it and of course you know johnny if you think about it in midway through all this there's a global pandemic and suddenly yeah. dave and i are, you know we're we're running our businesses through a pandemic and, you know, the challenges and then, you know, and then the subsequent, you know, um, bounce back from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the big thing is quite often when people talk about collaboration, it's not usually done by the owners of the business. It's usually a case of, as I mentioned earlier, a marketing department talking together. And with Absolutely. this... It sort of almost got to the point where, you know, even a few months ago when we, we, we were getting very close to having the final watch, I think I, I was uh, I, I was staying down in Devon with Dave. Um, I was in Bristol where my, my company is based. I live in Yorkshire and I was meant to be traveling back. And then there were the big storms in the UK, which meant that I couldn't travel back. And Dave very kindly came and rescued me and, and put me up for a few days <laughs> I remember, until the trip. Yeah, until the train started running again. And yeah. while we were there, we obviously, you know, because of the wind, we had no internet, no phone. We couldn't really work. So we were just talking about Project Costa. And it was the moment when Dave said, you know what? Obviously, we hope we'll sell some watches. 
But if we don't, we've created just a damn fine watch and we should yeah. be proud of that. And I think that's the nice thing. You know, actually, it's going from a basis of it's not going to be to everyone's taste. Of course but that doesn't matter because it is to our taste, you know, and, and, that's, and that's what I'm pleased is that we've created something that we well, the thing is, Johnny, absolutely it's, it's, adore. It's a technical looking watch and that's why I like it. You know, I've got a, a I collect all sorts of kinds of watches. I've got quite a large collection. And um, I, the, the reason I like this so much, and I'm not just saying it because it's my brand, it's quite technical looking. And we've, we've added the, um, the beat adjuster on the free sprung balance as well on the front, on the, on the balance bridge. So everything about it, it's just got a nice technical look. And I've got this thing about marine chronometers, um, which is why we, we did the Norfolk original. I just think it's got that look and, uh, I'm so pleased with it. It's really, you have no idea. And we both thought it's, uh, it's, it's been an incredible project. But uh, like I say, you can't appeal to everybody. But uh, and, and there will be people who pick faults. Some people won't like the balance wheel on the front. But we had to do something a little bit special for this collab, um, without any doubt, we did. Absolutely. And uh, but what I, uh, what I, my observation, I listened to the first 10 minutes of you're, you're describing how the process actually began. It sounds you've both... Uh, we both agree that you've got strong uh, identities, strong personalities, and absolutely. One of the that I actually had written down was like, how difficult was it to actually hammer out the to what details or what signatures of each of your brands and each of your companies uh, would would uh, how they would all uh, come together. But it sounds to me that going into it from day one, you say right. We have strong personalities. We both know what we want. We both know what we like. We both know what inspires us. So to go in with that kind of uh, an attitude is that there's, uh, and also the respect that you very obviously have for one another. Um, oh, absolutely. It has, uh, it has made for a, a, a really, really, Beautiful. Honestly, Johnny, the, the 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 hardest thing was the dial, the the, the dial on the case because the movement was a, was yeah. a no brainer. We always frost the movements. We 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 did experiment with the color a little bit and the shades. I have to agree. We it's a new the the, the balance wheel on the front. It's a it's a we call it Trinity balance, but it's been improved um, since we've used it on other models. Um, it's got four screws in set instead of three. Um, it's got the beat adjuster uh, on the front, so it's more technical than any watch we've ever built before. But it's um, it, the, honestly the dial, like Nick says, forty-seven times. That's no exaggeration, really. It's um, it, it's just crazy. It's just the you know the the numerals, everything about it, and that uses. I, I, know, I don't think Nick said it at the moment. He said it on the previous um, video. We it's the it's the fierce font, so it's a special font as well. Tell, well, tell, tell, yeah, us about so, the yeah. tell us about the detail because the numerals, for example, very, very, they're diamond cut uh, and then uh, played it with black gold. If I'm not correct, explain a little bit yeah. about the, what, what okay, the, so the when we look at the dial of the Fierce Guard, okay, so the, the numerals are well, you know, they're, they're, they're so important on, on a dial, and in fact. If we sort of go back before even how these numerals were were actually machined and made, um, this typeface for, for the numbers is called the Edwin typeface. It's named after yeah. the founder of Fears, Edwin Fear. And I commissioned a horological typographer back in, I think it was some point in 2019, to create a new typeface for Fears to use because... I think I've mentioned before, as much as I, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to reference the archive and the watches we've made in the past, but I don't want to rely on it. So I didn't want to just use numbers that, you know, we used in the 50s or the 60s. And so what I tasked the typographer with was to go through the archive. He came, he came to the offices and spent several days going through looking at watches, adverts, old designs, and he created a new modern set of numerals, but they have in them a lot of the essence of the typefaces that Fears used to use. So we end up with this very, this modern set, but with little flourishes. So things like extra curves on the four that you only really notice when you're living with the watch, the same with the number two. But then for this, this dial, you know, it's about balancing having a lot going on but also, and this is where the fears bit comes in, 
you know, our, our sort of motto that we live by is elegantly understated. And it's that idea of going, right, we've got a lot going on, but we need to sort of, it doesn't want to be OTT. It doesn't want to shout. Oh, absolutely. And so if we had just printed the numerals in black, they would have been too high a contrast. So in the end, the decision was taken that if we made them a pleaks, but what we did was we, we, we treasured each one almost like a gemstone. So basically you take a, a piece of brass, which is then milled out so that you get the feet for it to be riveted onto the dial. They're not glued on, they're riveted on. But then you laser cut out the numeral, diamond polish it so it has a mirror shine. And then, as, as you just mentioned, Johnny, the black gold. And I've, I think I've had to explain black gold more times in the last week than uh, than I ever concentrated. Well, Nick, one thing that's worth school. mentioning, because people are, people keep asking why the hands are set the way they are. Oh, yeah. I'll come on to that in just a moment. So yeah. but there's a reason for everything with this. So black gold was the reason why we went for a pleaks and we didn't just print black numerals. It's an alloy of 18 karat gold that is black in color, but because it is still gold, 75% gold, it has a very warm brownish hue to it. And so when you coat these polished numerals, it reduces the contrast, but still makes them incredibly legible. And so in some lights, they go very steel and they sort of blend into the dial. And then in other lights, they'll have a sort of brown black warmth to them. And mm. it's things like that, which are, you know, it's not easy to do that. It's certainly not cheap to do that, but it results in getting the perfect balance on a dial like this, which has a lot of information being displayed. And as Dave mentions, it's the uh, nicknamed the moustache hands. So why yeah. are the hands set at, at this time? Well, historically, when we go through the archive and, and historically fears always photographed or illustrated its watches set to this time. And oh. I don't, we haven't found out why. There's no reason why. I mean, most, most watches are photographed at 10 past 10 or 10 to 2 because it creates yeah. a smiley face. Yeah. But when I discovered this going through the archive, this is what I mentioned uh, at the start about using little elements and the traditions from the past to influence what we do today. And it's just a little carry on today. It means we don't put 1846 anywhere on the dial. We don't do it in that way. But the way we reference the Fears heritage from before is just by photographing the watch with the hands set to a time that they used to historically set them to. And it's, it's things funny. like that, which I, you know, it, it gets me far too excited. I like doing so things. So it's the only watch anywhere in the world that has a moustache, basically. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is actually quite fascinating because I had never really uh, looked into the positioning of the hands or why it yeah, was 10 yeah. to 2 or 10 past 10. And they automatically assume that because most of the branding is in that the, the top half of the watch, that if you had the hands uh, blocking the, the, the name, and that's why I couldn't understand sometimes, but I actually did see watches 10 years ago that would be a launch and the hands were obscuring the, the brand logo or something like that, and I couldn't. Uh, figure that out but I I, re I reckoned I always thought that the reason that uh, the hands were positioned at 10 to 2 or 10 past 10 was not to obscure the uh, no, it's always been a smiley thing that's what it is absolutely yeah yeah and although you can see the pocket watch reference here with with the small constant seconds and the power reserve in both in the top part of the dial and uh, very often in contemporary or in uh, watches over the last uh, 50, 60 years, certainly, if the subdials are usually at the six, nine, and three uh, uh, positions. So um, th that would make sense, obviously, to have the hands above those as well. So, yeah, interesting. I did not know that. So, Nicholas, thank you very much for educating me. A smiley face or a moustache? I get it. Moustache, absolutely. <laughs> Enjoy it. And I can tell, by the way, you're talking, you like this watch so much, you're literally about to place an order. Um, I am not far off it. I just need to talk to people <laughs> to tell them to get their foot off my neck and I will never be able to. <laughs> so, no, it's an absolute triumph, so it is. And um, and also, as I said, like the, the so we have the, 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 the detail that is so 
the fears uh, language, the design language that is uh, very, very obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, isn't it amazing just how beautifully the Garrick balance and balance bridge just uh, s s dovetails into that whole... Uh, uh, the, yeah, and that's the, a large balance the, as well. A large balance. Absolutely. Well, you're, you're, you're about the balance of the garlic watches have always been well in recent times been uh, yeah. generously proportioned. Let us say. Look, we actually have a couple of questions. Well, one question there from uh, Haida Raja, and uh, I'm going to put it up here now. And um, so, what was the most radical change you've made to the watch during the design process? Was there some compromise made here or there to accommodate another? Uh, uh, um, I, you know what? I, don't, I don't think we made any radical changes. It was always subtle changes all the way along. I, I, I don't seem to remember anything. We, we always had a, a, an idea of what we were going to do with the case. Um, the same with the crown. It, all the most of the design, like Nick said, most of the design problems were, were on the dial and it was just subtle little things um 47 times we changed the dial uh, I, I i don't remember anything do you nick well i was going to say i suppose it's the definition of uh radical i still remember it being about one o'clock in the morning on a saturday morning i'd worked a whole day on friday and quite often you know because Dave and I are both busy running our companies. When it came to making some of the decisions and discussing this, we do it at the end of a day. And so I'm in my office. He's in his office. We're on we're on, on phone. I think we're on a video call so you could see my screen on, with the Adobe. And, you know, we're playing around. To me, it was radical when we decided to make the two dials not a mirror image of each, of, each other. Because the first, you know, I'd say 10 or 20 design iterations – they were the same size and we kept coming up with a problem. They looked like eyes. Yeah. And it yeah, looked, you know, yeah. it's a watch, it's a face, you know, you want it to have personality, but it suddenly just, it looked like a watch looking at you. Now, if you've got something like, you know, um, the Chaikin Joker, you know, that leans into the face, right? With this, you were like, we don't want that. And so to me, that was a, from the outside, a tiny adjustment. I mean, literally, we were adjusting them by one millimeter in either direction. But it suddenly, immediately, it just clicked. And we both just kind of stood back and went, right, now we're I mean, really in a special Johnny, place. a designer once told me, and it's a, a, a long, long time ago, he said, if you look at something, and, and this is it's the same when you build a watch, and, and we, we take this on board. It, it, when If you look at something, you go, hmm, not bad. And there's something wrong with it. So it's simple as that. And, it, and, it, and if it's always a hmm, then it's not right. You have to look at it and go, wow, and it has to gel and it has to work. Then you know, and you walk away and you leave it. That's it. And that was the point with this. The, the subdials kept bothering us and we were always, hmm, yeah, not bad. I think they're okay, but they were never quite there. Um, and it was only right. when we made those changes, yeah, it was a wow factor. And that's when we thought we've got it right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we see another question there from uh, Bone Time Pieces. Uh, so I just run that one as well while we're doing it. So uh, regarding the power reserve indicator, yes, we did, well, and we did actually add a color. We added a, we added red. We we tried we tried it, um, all sorts of designs on the power reserve indicator. Yeah. Um, it, I, I, maybe we'll stick them up on Instagram at some point and show people. Um, it just we kept we always came back to this because it was just. The, 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 the problem was the power reserve indicator was just too in your face, even with the colour, um, yeah. was it not, Nick? Well, but I mean, but this is the interesting thing. Um, so actually, we have 45 dashes on the power reserve indicator to represent 45 hours of power reserve. And the final seven dashes are actually in a blood red. But they are printed so fine, so discreetly, that unless you really look at them in the right light, they almost just look like black. Yeah. But on that photo you've got up now, the final seven lines, the ones closest round to the logo side. So at the moment, the yeah. watch is fully wound. The yeah. final seven lines are actually red, not black. And it's a very subtle use of color. And I think well, this honestly, is the... Uh, Johnny, we, did, we did, honestly, we experimented with bold colors. Um, and, and, and we even... Rather than have the fine lines, uh, uh, the markers at the end, we we had blocks, did we not, Nick? And kind of uh, 
you know we tried all kinds of different ones yeah. and i think it's i think the biggest thing is you know coming back to it sounds like the cliche but the brand's dna well you know every watch fears makes we aim and to, for it to be as elegantly understated so it you know ties in with what fears historically did and mm -hmm. this was the thing when it comes to a power reserve having too bright a shade of red or using blocks or some sort of more traditional way of um, displaying a power reserve, it just, it, it didn't work. It wasn't in keeping. Yeah. It's because of the uh, really, uh, position as well at 10 and, and, and 2. It, 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 that's what causes the problem to the eye. To me, there is yeah. a delicacy about the, uh, the, the features on the dial, the minutes track, the, the hands, they're all delicate. Um, yeah, to have yeah. something like the traditional, uh, the, the graduated uh, curve of a, of a well, power. Johnny, curve. another thing that's worth mentioning is if you look at the hour markers, or they're actually the Fierce Pipette. So on the track. So the Fierce Pipette is our, our logo that we created about six years ago. And yes. the reason we created it was it's a reflection of the Fierce shape of hand. So the hands on this watch, the reason they're that particular shape, so very almost like a syringe, but without the long section at the end, yep. is when you go through the archive, when you look at the watches from about the 1940s to the 1960s, nearly all Fears watches use this shape of hand. And this goes right back to sort of when Dave and I first met. You know, I remember having a conversation with Dave and saying, I... You know, I, I believe a really good design of watch from any watch brand is one that when you remove the name from the dial, you can still instantaneously recognize it. And largely that's due to the hands. So, for example, my, my Garrick piece unique doesn't actually say Garrick on the dial, but it uses the famous Garrick anchor hands. Anchor and hands exactly. so yeah. straight away you recognize it and go, it's, it's, it's Garrick. So I thought, right, that's something we're going to keep on there. But then when you come to doing an hour marker, rather than just having a block, having a square or rectangular block doesn't really work with that elegant tip of the hand. You need it to be pointing towards another micro tip. And these are things that, to be perfectly honest, when you look at the watch, you shouldn't look at it and go, oh, it's got the Fears logo as the as, as the hour markers. Yeah. That, that, you shouldn't see that. But yeah. what should then happen is so I always call these bus stop moments. So, you know, before we had smartphones, you're waiting at the bus stop. You've got, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes to, to kill until free buses turn up at once. What do you do? You, you look at your watch. Well, if you're me, you look at your watch and you suddenly notice things about the design that you wouldn't notice when you're glancing at it to check the time. And so I always like to have on Fears watches you know, I call them bus stop moments. People might call them Easter eggs, you know, little clever design things that shouldn't shout, but they're what give the watch personality. Yeah. Without them, the watch would look just as elegant, but it might look a little colder. The design wouldn't have that warmth of being a face, you know, um, a face with a very beautiful moustache on yeah. it. Everyone is now going to see. <laughs> uh, the, the guy just said about that he can't unsee the moustache. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's uh, boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, the boom. The answer, I just, uh, sorry, I put it up over there. Yeah. <laughs> can't unsee the surprise of the stash. Yeah, exactly. Uh, again, it's, yeah, and again, but th this is so uh, informative about the, the whole process. And Nick, I'm uh, taking from this, Joe, like you, you, you're obviously acutely uh, tuned in to the very, very tiniest of detailed and nuances and is that part of your 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 own training have you come up through design uh formal design uh, colleges or anything like that or where does that come from um no no it doesn't um i mean i i would say johnny that's that's a very polite way of saying how anal i am when it comes to everything in my life you know being very precise and but i think i i know where the training came from though um, and it had nothing to do with design. But so before I restarted my family's watch company, I was an apprentice at Rolex in London, in yeah. their headquarters, in their workshop. So while I was training to become a watchmaker, they realized when they were doing the initial bench tests that I had quite a sharp eye 
for the detail and noticing things. And so what they did is they said, look, while you're doing your training, what we would also like you to do is work on the final quality control. So once the watches have been serviced, they don't want the watchmaker who serviced it doing the quality control. You've got to separate church and state. You've got to have them as two separate yeah. things. And so I said, well, that, that sounds great. It's wonderful. I mean, what a, what a great opportunity. You get to handle, you know, 100 Rolexes in a day. You know, I've, I've handled every Rolex model multiple times, and I'm very lucky wow. to have done that. Yeah. But what you had to do very quickly was realize you had to QC a watch in less than a minute, and you also had oh. to get it right. There's no room for for faults and errors. Mm -hmm. And so you realize how, how you QC things. In, in, in that speed, but that accuracy is when you're holding the Rolex. So say you're holding a Submariner. What you had to do was mentally superimpose the image of the watch onto what you're physically holding. And what happens, it's like if you do, um, you know, spot the difference, you know, when you've got the two images next to each other. If you were to cut them out and put them over each other and hold them up to the light, you would spot straight away what the errors sure. are. And that's sure. what I was taught to do at Rolex with the QC is put the correct image mentally on the watch and straight away that speck of dust, that scratch on the hand, that bezel insert being out of alignment. And these are things that would take you 10, 20 minutes to spot unless you develop a, I don't want to call it a trick because it was training into how yeah. to spot things like that. And so from that, when I left Rolex, I realized that, you know, it is all about the proportions, you know, 0.1 mil. I, I joke, but it's it's true. 0.1 millimeter a on, on a, a watch style can completely destroy the design. You know, I mentioned yeah. about the watch hands. Um, I mean, I, th I think Dave hasn't still recovered from how much that's going to cost us having to redo the hands at the last minute. But the hands were off by less than 0.2 of a millimeter. And it just, I, I just saw the watch and, you know, it sounds like I'm being very dramatic, but on a project like this, you go, actually, oh, yeah, it's got my yeah. family's, yeah. what is it? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's also that thing of going, it's got my family's name literally on the dial. It has to be right. But, you know, when you spot things like that and you can't unsee them and you have to correct it. And I think on, on one of the comments about the, uh, the moustache hands, it, it spoke about no expense spared in designing and creating this watch. Mm -hmm. I think that's where this partnership really has worked. We've spoken a lot about our friendship, but I think what also is true is the way both Garrick and Fears approach making watches. Dave and I have never started the a project of building a watch in our company by saying, we want to hit this price point and then we're going to work down and this is the budget we have to build. What we've yeah. both always done from day one is gone, ooh, I would like to use this movement, this quality of case, this way of dial, strap, Absolutely. box. You yeah. know. And everything has been built from the ground up, which to a lot of people, they'll think, well, that's obvious. But actually, it's quite rare. You see that more in independent watchmaking than, Johnny, it's not, than it's not um, easy larger companies. Is. Building a set of watch hands isn't easy, and you know you've got to thermally blue them, you've got to cut them, you've got to you've got to finish them by hand, you've got to make the collets for the hands and turn them on a watchmaker's lathe. It's 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 all time consuming and labour intensive, and that's what the same. There is no compromises at all, absolutely not. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's uh, no again. It is. It's 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 the, it's the, the sum of the of the detail, really, isn't it? And uh, like I, I get Nicholas where, where you come from. Uh, in a kind of a different way when I'm doing graphics or doing uh, type of things that, that logos imagery for the for in the Latin or for the watch press or for uh, anything I am also uh, a stickler for detail and uh, has to be right. and uh, iterations I have folders full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images that you may not be able to tell the difference between uh, the first one and the last one and I may the one I maybe have chosen is number 12 out of 120 but it's yeah. you know I, I do get where you're coming from um uh, a stickler for uh, for detail so there's another question there from uh, kevin uh, kevin thanks for your, your question stunning piece question are there any other easter eggs on the watch <laughs> um well I, I i don't want to give away all all of them but yes there are i think um 
if, if, if you bring up an image, of, if you bring up of an image, I'll, I'll point out a couple of very subtle small ones. Actually, um, well, I'm already on the dial because, side, or uh, let's go yeah. dial side first. Um, okay, so we, we've spoken about the power reserve and and um, the lines on that. So on the other side, we've got the small seconds, the running seconds at ten o'clock, and that is sunken, and the edge of it is diamond cut with a bevel at 30 degrees which is then rhodium plated so it has a mirror polish and a beautiful shine to it when you catch it in the light obviously right now it just looks silver but that's actually a polished beveled edge we did the exact same angle and the exact same polish and rhodium on the opening for where the balance sits within the dial even all the way around the key of where it's screwed in and what that does is it helps link those two elements together your yeah. eye sees the sparkle from one and the other but what it also does rather nicely is of course with the the garrick balance bridge is it's beveled and polished and well, so it's what it's you framed have on the surface are, yeah and polished on the edges framed yeah. on the top but polished on the edges and what that means is you've got this polished edge running around so where you see england and it runs right around. And then where it joins the balance bridge, it then cuts inwards. Well, it cuts inwards with a polished bevel on the dial, which mirrors the polished bevel on the bridge. And you end up with these free, almost like a, a valley of polished bevels running around before the beveled edge continues off and then goes around at right at the very bottom of the dial. That is about 0 0.3 millimeters thick, that bevel. It is incredibly tiny, but by doing those extra steps, it helps to make the, the bridge feel not screwed on top of the dial, but also not feel like we've just stamped a hole in the dial and you're looking into the movement. It's why the balance bridge feels completely part of the dial, even though, of course, it's part of the movement. So that's one Easter egg. The only other one I'm going to point out, and then uh, and then everyone else will have to have to start looking at the watch. Um, the other one is so the word England just beneath the hands. So I mentioned earlier about the horological typographer who designed our Edwin numerals. So on Instagram, he's known as One Hour Watch, which I'm yeah, sure uh, I, 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 a lot of people will recognise his work. He is absolutely superb um very very good designer and i'm very proud to say he actually now works for yeah, fears full time um but he had worked on the numerals and once we'd finished the design we we got him to just make make sure everything was just absolutely perfect but one of the things i said to him was the word england we can do that in a different typeface that isn't a fears typeface it's not a garrick typeface and it's not a typeface on anyone's computer so Lee, for his masters, created a typeface specifically for the watch industry. And it's called Matic, like automatic. Okay. And England is done in Matic. And I believe it's one of the very first watches to ever have his typeface on the dial. And for me, that was an important part of linking, you know, what the work he's done to make this watch special in terms of the Edwin numerals, but also, you know, by, by you know, giving him effectively a, a, a very small part of real estate, but to have his own typeface actually on a watch that's in production. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, gentlemen, we have, uh, okay, we're, we're, we're wrong over a little bit longer than we thought we would. A little uh, bit. <laughs> that's a lumber state you know, there's, been something that, uh, there's an aspect of the watch that we uh, we haven't really talked about and that is uh, uh, the UT uh, G04 uh, which is the, the the movement that powers uh, the, the watch and uh, so for uh, a lot of the aesthetics uh, are from Nicholas's uh, uh, input the, the movement is very much uh, Garrick um, so if we could maybe spend it, if we're going to do another five minutes, ten minutes, we could maybe talk a little bit about uh, this beauty. Yeah, so so this this is one of our existing calibers. Um, there's been 
many changes to the original UTG01 over the years. Um, this has obviously got the power reserve indicator and the the running seconds on on, on the on the front at, at ten and two o'clock. Um, but it's quite a complex movement, so everything sits on the top, um, and it, and it's uh, it's quite a build, and everything's finished as well to a really high standard. If uh, me and Nick were talking about this yesterday, if you you can't see under the dial, but if you if you if you look under the dial, you can see it on this shot. You'll see there's even screwed chatons uh, on the top of the movement under the dial. You see, it, it, it all matters. If somebody ever wants to take this watch apart in the future, um, it, it's all about. It's got to look good both sides. Uh, it's important what, to me. What, what did we call it, Dave? We we said this watch is basically the equivalent of painting behind the radiators. Painting behind the radiators. Yeah, exactly. So uh, so it's all it's all it's all meticulous attention to detail, and it takes honestly, Johnny. It's a long build process to to finish and bevel the parts, um, do the frosting and everything else, and, and then uh, put it together. Uh, and the hot and the the biggest thing on this, we haven't spoke about it actually, is the free sprung balance on the front. So for those that don't know, the difference between a normal balance wheel, which is the the the, the beating heart of the watch, obviously, it, the difference between a normal balance wheel and this one is this is a free sprung balance, and a normal balance uses a regulator um, to adjust the timing. And we use a free sprung balance, doesn't have a regulator, it uses four screws or three screws, whatever, um, to adjust the timing. It takes longer to set up and it literally does take weeks to set it up and get it running correctly. But when you do, you take it away and you'll never have a problem with it. It's just the most accurate system um, and it's really good. I mean, people talk about tourbillons, of course, but a free sprung balance is, uh, uh, has been used for for a long time and it's it, the reason it's not used in a lot of watches it's just the the time it takes to set the thing up it's completely different and you don't have that adjustment that you do on a normal balance wheel but we regulate down to plus three uh, we say plus five because i mean that's that's good enough but we normally regulate regulate the watches to plus three but it's done over a process of about two to three weeks in in total so it's um, it's quite a complex, long-winded process, and you have to test the watch in all positions, make the adjustments, test it again, and, and, and it takes a while as well because it's, it's it's assembled from scratch the entire movement. So once it settles down and you get the timing right, then that's it. You'll never ever need to touch that watch again, and that's again an important thing on this watch. We wanted no compromise on anything at all. Absolutely beautiful. It is. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a. a, a, a Fabulous piece. I, I think the free sprung balance, knowing what it is, knowing that you don't need to regulate Absolutely. after has been set, is a thing of uh, absolute beauty. Of I mean, even even little differences. Nick talks about design changes and things, but it, it, you know, we went through, and I forgot about this actually, because funnily enough, when we were last in Bristol together, which is I think Nick, the night the storm came, and we and we took back. If you go back to the movement, Johnny. Um, the the one the, the the other one keep going keep going back, back. that one yeah so if you look at the bottom uh, with 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 the balance cock you see the grain in on that but that's actually the main plate and the top thing with the chatons is is the bridge just for those that don't know but if you look at the the bridge is frosted and the main plate underneath is grained um the balance cocks are also frosted now when we first did it, we agreed that the whole thing would be frosted and we frosted it. We actually met up in Bristol um, with my partner, Simon. We we showed each other the watch and straight away we agreed with the said, no, we've made a mistake. It has to be grained. So we had to strip the whole thing down. And it is literally quite a long winded process. We had to strip yeah. the whole watch down, start again and grain that main plate and put it all back together again. And it was all last minute, was it not, Nick? It was, but, you know, it was one of those things where you say, fine, it's going to delay it maybe a month. But, you know, and I, I mean, that's why it took three and a half years, you know, because yeah, there were exactly throughout, the, for, like for, throughout the time there were things like that. But I think, you know, if you're building something without the aim of just saying, well, it has to be built by this date because we need to launch it to coincide with this marketing strategy. If you just remove all that, then you go, well, let's just do it when it's right. And I think, yeah, well, that, another, that was a big thing with the movement. Thing, you know, the movement, Johnny, is the fact that, sorry, Nick, is the fact that the the balance bridge and the chatons are made from a special alloy called Circumet, um, yes. and it's only used on our watches. It's used nowhere else. So, uh, uh, amazing. Amazing.
It's got um, special anti-magnetic and thermal qualities, so it doesn't expand and contract as well, which is quite important. Yeah, and so it's uh, exclusive to uh, to garnet movements. Um, yeah, but it's a, honestly, it's a pig to polish. Oh my god, it, <laughs> it, it, it isn't easy. Uh, I'm trying to black polish it. It's quite, honestly, um, it's a nightmare. Really, really yeah. difficult to work with. So, guys, we have one more question there from uh, Haider uh, Raja, and this is a question that I can possibly help answer as well. Are you considering? submitting the watch to, to well we were too late but we will absolutely and maybe someone will pick it so um I, I, yeah absolutely i think it's worthy it's, without a doubt. I, I agree i actually was on the nominating uh panel there for the gphg yeah we were too late yeah uh, just just too late and uh, the, the, it, it actually raises a question because um the, i was looking at the uh the criteria for watches that are eligible for nomination um, well, you see, what it, John, is one important thing. It's the watches that are eligible to win, and unless they've got Tudor on them, you, you don't stand a chance. There's, uh, <laughs> well, I, you may say that I couldn't possibly comment. Do, yeah. what, I, what I'm doing, David, uh, I, I am uh, advocating the independent brands anyway. That's that's for my uh, rightly so, Johnny. Rightly so, the independent yeah, brands yeah. offer much more than any any others, and uh, and it's a fact that you know we're always innovating. You look at. You look at Basel World before it finished every single year. Everybody was doing the same thing. It was Tour Beyond one year, GMT the next. It was always the same thing. But you look at any independents, they're always doing something different, always. Um, and that's where the innovation is, um, without any doubt. I, I love that. And, and for me, so the GPHG is an opportunity for me uh, to use uh that platform to be able to like one of the things that I noticed about GPHG when I was making my nominations uh, over the last few weeks was that I was adding names like uh, Philippe Narbel, for example. Young, no, absolutely. Uh, Philippe's a good friend of ours, really, yeah. really good friend of ours. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, lovely guy. Yeah. There's a drop down of names, there's a drop down of brands, and uh, whenever you're selecting, you're nominating, uh, and one of the categories is other, and you add a name. And the next time we use the drop down, that name is included. So I like adding new names to the GPHD oh, drop down. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and, uh, and you, uh, Garrick has been there before. Uh, not yeah. Not, uh, yeah. Yeah. Two years yeah. on the trot, we were finalists last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Fears was there last year as well. Yeah. But sure. you can guess who beat us, obviously. Um, yeah. And. So, but one of the things I noticed about it, and, and I have a couple of observations from my experience with the GPHG this year. Firstly, it's a great honour to be able to uh, to have that uh, that uh, uh, nomination uh, to be able to do do that. It's quite time consuming to go through all the watches that have been released. I, know, I was doing it myself, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so it's, uh, but it, it looked to me like the cutoff dates uh, were. Like we could nominate watches that were wouldn't be seen by the public until twenty until November twenty twenty two. So uh, that might be grand if you're working within the the big manufacturers, uh, mm -hmm. but there's watches that aren't going to be seen until twenty until November twenty twenty two. Well, when the nominations are revealed mid summer or early summer uh, in the next step of the process, those watches surely can't be shown either. So it, it just for me. I, I couldn't figure out why there was a cutoff point so far into the future, and yet nobody knows. That's the point. So there, they, it could be slightly refined, but uh, it's uh, yeah. anyway. As I say, look, it's a great honour to be able to do it. It also has been a great honour to have yourself, uh, Dave and Nicholas, here today to talk us through. But is it more of an honour to speak to me than Nick, or equally the same? <laughs> I was hoping, like, I was actually uh, looking to get Nick, Nick on th through you, so I was probably using you as a bridge to, you know, to get the. We're to... just checking because there, there's a bit of a comp bit of competition going on at the moment. Over who's got the best man. To, to, to get to the brains of the organisation, I needed to, uh, you know, help me. <laughs> and so, um, but that, that's so, guys, it's been a, 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 re a remarkable day for both of you. It's been a remarkable day for. Uh, for British watch yeah, absolutely movies. fantastic, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's it's uh, momentous and memorable, and uh, it's, it's also been very, very uh, well received. Uh, or I haven't seen a single disparaging comment, and usually you don't have to dig well, too far. It's, 
the it's all been positive uh, and and the other positive thing is johnny you're the first person to interview us today so um, we'll be sending yeah, the invoice yeah. later that's no problem at all I'll put a word massively I'll, mate seriously i'll put a word to all those other invoices yeah. and uh, so, <laughs> so um but guys, it's been fantastic to give me so much of your time on the day that you launched your uh, wonderful new beers dark collaboration it has been a pleasure to talk to both of you today and uh, guys don't be a stranger whenever we're bringing out something new let's do this again i will try and condense it a little bit further because we're trying to make us a little bit more oh no absolutely listen we're, we're always around and it's good to talk about things in general watchmaking and whatever whatever else but uh, you know a couple of things johnny i like your shirt it's really cool um really cool. yeah <laughs> wicked and and your hair's looking better than last time i spoke to you which was uh, Remember during lockdown, it was up here. <laughs> yeah, in all fairness, David, that, that's some way to treat charity because I was trying to do it. <laughs> so I could yeah, do I don't have such a problem, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh, guys, it's been uh, great. I see a couple more comments here just before we go. So, uh, Thomas from Germany, watches and words. Thanks so much indeed for tuning in. It's great to uh, have you back to. Uh, to follow what we're, we're doing and uh, also to your fantastic questions. Thank you so much indeed. And uh, whenever we get through GHE 23, we'll make sure that the uh, Fears Garrick uh, number one is uh, on our list for uh, for nomination. So everybody who's been following us, uh, in the middle, we'll be back again with uh, myself and Dan interviewing uh, another uh, selection of uh, uh, independent watchmakers uh, over the next uh, month, two months. And, uh, but in the meantime, I am hoping to bring more of these uh, launch day uh, in the metal introduces and uh, we will we'll be back for that. Thank you so much for sticking with us. No guys. worries, mate. Good to see and, you, Johnny. Uh, really. for joining Thanks for us having us. us. So uh, just hang on one moment and I am going to say good- goodbye to everybody now and uh, we will catch you next time. Thank you.